everyone, and welcome to Privacy Beat, where we bring you all of the latest in privacy news. We've got a lot of juicy stuff for you. If you are interested in learning about how to have more privacy in your digital life, this is the show to come to. We put out short form tutorials to explain how different privacy products works. And then every week we have this wonderful live stream where we dig into something juicy. We get feedback from all of you. So if you have feedback, if you have questions, do not hesitate to write comments in the chat. I'll be keeping a close eye on that. So uh, if you have anything, maybe I'll respond live to all of that. Don't forget to hit the like, share and subscribe button that really helps us get boosted in the YouTube algorithm. YouTube doesn't like us too much. Uh, but with your help, then they can be our a message can be shared to more people. So let's dive into it. This segment is of course called Get Off My Digital Lawn. All right, we're going to attack some people on our digital lawn. Uh, and uh, the first people we're going to talk about, internet service providers. This is something that I think is pretty epic that a lot of people don't realize what is going on. So today's show is actually going to be based on a uh, an article that came out in Vice last year. And it was really, really great. I want to dive into the details and also give you some more context around all of this. So let me pull up this article. Take a look at this. You got this article from Vice and uh, they, they came out end of last year where they said how data brokers sell access to the backbone of the internet. Sounds sort of foreboding already, the access, access to the backbone of the internet. So ISPs are quietly distributing net flow data that can, among other things, trace traffic through VPNs. Let's unpack what all of this means because it is kind of disturbing, right? So the idea is that internet service providers, they're quietly giving away all of this detailed information about your activity online. So Vice says here that this includes, uh, you know, which computer is communicating which uh, uh, with another computer, Com uh, put my teeth back in, um, which computer is communicating with another and they're sharing this details with private businesses. And then those businesses in turn are selling that information to a range of third parties as well. So let's let's unpack because I just I am I'm so up to my ears in data being sold without our knowledge. That's the crux of today's episode is making you aware of how much of your data is just being sold. You have no idea you even gave it away in the first place, let alone that this is then being sold again on secondary markets. So Vice says the information is known as net flow data, which is a useful tool for digital investigators. So I wanted to dive into this. Let's pull up this uh, article from Wikipedia. It kind of explains what net flow is. So it's a feature that was first introduced uh, by Cisco routers around 1996. It provides the ability to collect IP network traffic as it enters or exits an interface. So NetFlow uh, is basically a network protocol for collecting, you know, IP traffic information, monitoring network flow, and it does this by, you know, analyzing network flow data. And in turn, you can get like a, a holistic picture of network traffic flow volume. It's a really good tool for like diagnostics and different like security firms use this to figure out, you know, what's going on in the network where there's congestion. It can be used to like trace bad actors. So that's basically what NetFlow data is. And by analyzing the data provided by NetFlow, uh, a network administrator can determine things like, you know, source and destination of traffic. They can determine the class of service, cause of congestion. These are all things that kind of get outlined here, right? Now, in the early days of NetFlow, the goal was only to collect the most important information from the you know, digital transaction to keep the flow record as compact and as lightweight as possible. And then NetFlow has since evolved from this initial go goal. Now it is able to do so much more than simply aggregate these packets and bytes. So network flow uh, is a really efficient way to collect and store information about endpoints, about communications, applications, uh, all the things that make up our cyber environment. Okay, so that's just a very quick outline of what they mean when they say um, uh, they're, they're talking about this net flow data. Now you have all of this information that's being shared and 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 that's able to be collected. 
what's done with it? Like, isn't this a huge invasion of privacy? Who's collecting it? Like, there's so many questions that need to be answered. So generally, if you're connected to someone's network, then they might show you a privacy policy or a terms of service that you click, yes, because none of us ever read those things because they're like 50 pages long and they're just filled with vague information. Anyway, we just click yes. And we've given away consent for them to collect and analyze this data. That's essentially how this stuff is enabled. Now, there are some concerns with people collecting this data. It's not as simple as, you know, getting consents in this vague form. Um, for example, in Europe, they have these privacy protection laws like GDPR. So GDPR, for example, you need to be careful uh, with data that's personally identifying. So usernames can count as something that's personally identifying. Um, DNS names might as well. So actually, people have to be more careful about what they're collecting. Before, it was just a free-for-all for data. And since GDPR, you know, different networks have had to curtail that. Now, for example, like if your NetFlow data could show that an identifiable person was perhaps going to a website that was aimed at people who want you know, who have HIV, for example. Well, now you have to, as the person who's collected that information, be aware of who can access that data, where and how it's stored, how long you retain it for, and lots of laws around that. Um, there's, so that's the legal treatment of this. Obviously, in the US, that doesn't apply because we have no comprehensive data laws, except really in, in California. Um, now, there is also an ethical side of this, right? So when different companies collect this data and they've got to figure out, well, are they encrypting it in transit? Are they encrypting it at rest? You know, is it possible that a rogue employee at a company that's collecting this data could go and access this personally identifiable information because they want to stalk their ex or find out about their neighbor? Like there's lots of things that um, it, it's ethically unsound, right? Because having this vast stretch of trove of data opens up a whole big can of worms. So I'm bringing up all of this just as an idea of like, to make you aware that this stuff is being collected. There are lots of issues around it, questions you as consumers should be asking, especially when you hit those, I agree on privacy policies and things uh, like that. Um, now, this is how companies and networks are essentially treating the situation with your net flow data. This should concern you, right? Because if companies, if the only thing stopping them from like collecting this data about you, like you're connected to a network or your ISP, for example, we'll get into that in a second. Um, if the only thing is is that is really curtailing them is whatever's written into their privacy policy or the terms of service, and they're saying, well, we've manufactured consent because you clicked that agree button, there's a big issue there. Um, and I don't think people realize that so much information about them is being collected and that companies think that it's all legitimate because you clicked that yes button. So that was the first thing that I want to mention here. Second question, question for the audience. Uh, look, Karen in SF gives me a thumbs up. Well, Karen in SF, I have a question for you. Have you read the terms of service on your uh, ISP? Right, ISP standing for internet service provider. So whoever provides your internet, have you read their privacy policy? Do you know how much data about you they're collecting? Do you know who they're sharing it with? You know, I've got a comment from low waste, high melanin. Did you read yours? I would love to know. Let me know in the chat if you guys have read your policies because let's dig into what ISPs do with this data, right? I'm gonna go back to this Vice article here. So one person that, uh, was interviewed. <laughs> Read this. I'm concerned that NetFlow data being offered for commercial purposes is a path to a dark effing place. That really encapsulates how I feel about all of this too. Uh, so a lot of people are saying in the chat, yeah, they're not, they're not reading these. Yeah, of course, even if you were reading it, I've got a heads up. These things are super vague and they're literally designed just to give them liability protection. So these are not privacy policies that are giving you any information about what's actually happening with your data. Even if you agree to it, their intent is to be as broad as possible with these policies. So that's just, don't feel bad. If you haven't reading it, it's okay. You're not really informing yourself by reading them anyway. That's the catch of this entire industry that we need to be aware of. So let's dive uh, more into this article here. So the data can be used for, among other things, 
trafficking traffic through virtual private networks, which are used to mask where someone is connecting to a server from, and by extension, their approximate physical location. This was a big standout for me in this article, because by collecting all of this data flow, uh, sorry, net flow data, they're actually able to trace connections and find patterns that can link your activity. So it doesn't matter if you're masking yourself through a VPN, they can actually trace that. That is how they actually catch bad players on the internet a lot of the times. Um, but it also means that they could collect the data potentially of good players too. That's the, um, that's the that's the issue here. So this team, this company here, team, and I have no idea how to pronounce that. Samru. Let me know in the chat if you know how to pronounce that. Team Samru. So they're a threat intelligence firm, right? They work with ISPs to access NetFlow data. Now, Senator Ron Wyden has apparently been con conducting his own investigations into the sale of sensitive data. And uh, it's interesting because we got a little bit of information from them, and this is sort of laid out in this Vice article here. So apparently, Team Saimru told Senator Wyden's office that they obtained NetFlow data from third parties in exchange for threat intelligence. So let's unpack that. They're getting NetFlow data, which means data about all of your traffic. They're obtaining that from third parties and in exchange, they're giving them threat intelligence. And that's just one of the exchanges going on right now. Now, it's, uh, here, I'll take it off the article there. Now, what's interesting is you go to the website of this company, Team Simru, and it says that they work with both public and private sector teams to help identify, track and stop bad actors both in cyberspace and on the ground. So, you know, they, they seem like a, a good company catching bad guys and all of that. But one thing that a source familiar told Vice was that they're less worried about that bad guy hacker and more worried about a bad guy government or company or politician. So that's sort of the crux of this here is when you get all of this data that's freely available because your ISP is selling it to third parties who are then selling it to other people and it ends up in the hands of, of companies like Team Simru, um, it's anyone's data. It's not just for catching bad guys. It's not just for investigation. Sometimes it can be for governments to target dissidents or journalists or NGO workers or human rights activists or anyone who disagrees with them. Like this stuff is valuable and it's out there and it's being collected and it is being bought by government intelligence agencies. We'll get to that in a little moment. Um, so basically, the uh there are all kinds of of concerns regarding the sale of this data um there are privacy concerns there are security concerns and this news highlights the isps are providing this data at scale to third parties likely without the informed consent of their own users so i bet you guys didn't know that your data was just being sold and if you did you probably didn't consent to it or you're not happy about it so there is a huge industry out there that is of enormous scale selling your data, your net flow data, which basically means like the stuff that you're doing on the internet. And uh, and almost, you know, users almost certainly don't know that this is happening. And users also don't have any control over who that data is then sell, sold to. So it's not just a matter of your ISPs selling that data, those people then sell that data and then they could sell it and then they could sell it to bounty hunters or they could sell it to um, you know, extortionists or they could sell it to anyone and get all kinds of information that they can use for any kind of nefarious purpose. You as a consumer have no control over that. It's completely outside of your control because that data is being sold uh, outside of your control. So it's, it's a real issue. Now, um, apparently it gets worse than that team Simon's uh customers can actually probe the data sets they can effectively run queries against virtually any ip to pull the net flows to and from that ip over a given point in time so that's terrifying um team Simon apparently told vice and said well actually we restrict the amount of data that's returned so that only a small portion of the net flow data in its database can be accessed by any one client but like, what do those those uh, restrictions effectively mean? What, what 
like i mean how do they define small portion for example how do they define like any one client like if i'm working in the same business and i have two people in the same company can we both query data and then just get a whole bunch of it because we're different people querying like it just seems like very loose restrictions that are just there to pay lip service to this right um john morris in the chat says data is the biggest deal of the decade absolutely is it's uh it's insane how much data is being shared Anyway, let's keep going. So um, apparently uh, a brochure for Team Cyru says, well, they trace malicious activity through a dozen or more proxies and VPNs to identify the origin of a cyber threat. So it gives you an idea of what this NetFlow data can actually tell you. Um, now, access to NetFlow data lets a security team observe what's happening on the wider internet. It may indicate what is happening to other organizations beyond the borders of their own network or company. So it kind of does give you this really holistic view of movements and what's going on. It's just a huge amount of insight. Now, Citizen Lab, you've probably heard of them. Let me pull up this here. So we've got Citizen Lab. Uh, Citizen Lab, they are an organization that does a lot of research into security on the internet. Um, and they especially look at security on the internet as opposed as a threat to human rights. And it's interesting because they're usually so focused on protecting people and making sure that no one has access to too much data and, and plugging vulnerabilities and all of that sort of stuff. But they actually put out a report recently uh and it was a report on the israeli spyware vendor called kandiru and they thanked team simru they thanked them this is what they said they said thanks to team simru for providing access to their pure signal recon product their tools ability to show internet traffic telemetry from the past three months provided the breakthrough we needed to identify the initial victim from Candiro's infrastructure. Um, com comari, comari, and someone said that that's how you pronounce it. Si I'm, I, I'm calling it Simru. Apparently it's Comari, Simru. Listen, guys, I am, I, I, I'm never gonna get that right. So if I say something that's in the vicinity of Simru, Comari, anything like that, that's you, you know what I'm talking about. Apparently it's Scottish. So I, I, I could talk with the Scottish accent the rest of the show. You guys would tune out real quick. Um, so please forgive my terrible pronunciation. But anyway, back to the Citizen Lab. What is striking to me about this is that um, Citizen Lab is usually so good on the privacy front and identifying big threats. It seems to me that team Kimru, how do you pronounce that in Scottish, uh, is a big threat. It seems that they have vast amounts of data. They're selling it to all kinds of players, including you know, government intelligence agencies. And it seems that that would be a threat that would, you know, um, that, that people should be aware of. So it's, um, oh, someone says Kimru means uh, whales in Welsh. Interesting. All right, thank you, internet chat. You are very helpful and wonderful. I always like the comments. Um, so uh, I, uh, let's say, uh, I'll pull this back on, on me there. So I, it just surprised me that Citizen Lab was thanking them because I understand that this is a double-edged sword. With this vast treasure troves of data, you can absolutely target the bad guys. You can get more information, track people down who are doing malicious activity. But you also have this treasure trove of information that could be used for any any purpose, can be resold onto third parties. How they're getting the data in the first place is kind of ethically dubious because ASPs have basically manufactured consent and sold that data without users really being aware of it or consenting or being happy with it. So a lot of things going on here that I think are morally not great. Um, now, Team Kumru and Hagas uh, did respond to multiple requests for, did not respond to multiple requests for comment uh, to Vice. Uh, Vice asked them, you know, which ISPs provide it with data, what privacy protections are in place around the collection and distribution of such data, whether the individual ISPs ha users have provided consent for their data to be shared. They got no response to any of this. Let's go back to the Vice article here because I want to um, uh, dive into that. 
some more. So there is actually another company that gets NetFlow data from ISVs. I mean, there are a ton, but Vice kind of just talks about uh, some other companies here. So da, 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 where are we? Da, 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 Cortex. Da, da, da. There we go. So Cortex Expanse product. Apparently, there is a Palo uh, company called Palo Alto Networks, and uh, they also gain access to NetFlow data according to product documentation available online. And Cortex Expanse uh, is one of um, uh, is like a product, and it says they obtain flow data via multiple relationships with Tier One. ISPs. And through these relationships, Cortex Expanse has access to a sample of approximately 80% of global flows. What? That's a lot of data right there. And uh, apparently this company declined to name which ISPs were the source of this information, uh, the source of this data. They also declined to comment whether it purchased the data outright from ISPs, it is possible that, you know, maybe they purchased this data from third party brokers and the ISPs had already sold it to third party brokers. And now um, for its Cortex Expanse product, Palo Alto Networks is just buying it from third party vendors. We don't know. What we do know is this data is just running around in the wild and it can be incredibly sensitive. It can show basically your real world movements. It can show which websites you're accessing. It can show a huge amount. Uh, oh, I do want to mention we did get a new melt member on the channel. Uh, we've got Sal Peter, who just became an NBTV fan. Really appreciate that, Sal. Thank you so much uh, for your support. Let me take this off here so you can see me. I uh, This is a completely community-driven platform. We don't have sponsorships. We don't have ads. We don't get paid to promote certain products. It's all funded by community support. So I really appreciate uh, your support in that. So let's, uh, let's go back to this other uh, company. So it's interesting, like not all ISPs are selling data or not all of them want you to know that they're doing it. There was an interesting exchange with Dave Schaefer in this Vice article. Let me pull that back here. So Dave Schaefer, he's the CEO of ISP Cogent Communications. You probably haven't heard of them, but they handle around 22% of the world's internet traffic. And uh, they're basically selling uh, to large wholesale customers such as Vodafone, Cox, Spectrum, and BT. So you would have heard of those um, other companies, Vodafone, Cox, Spectrum, uh, but you probably didn't know that they were being supplied by the ISP Cogent Communications. Now, he told Vice that um, as an ISP, his company doesn't provide their NetFlow data to anyone. And he said, fundamentally, people have the right to some degree of anonymity. And as a carrier, it's not our job to eavesdrop in any form. So that sounds great, right? Um, but then he goes on and says, I don't know if there's really a lot of useful things people could do with NetFlow data, he added. There's probably some bad things I could think of if that data was available. And that, it seems like, I mean, a comment like that puts up so many red flags. Like he, he honestly can't think of any nefarious reason why people might want access to your internet traffic like this is a guy who's the ceo of one of the largest isps and he's like oh i, don't, I really don't think the data is useful anyway so even though he's there saying well we don't sell our data i read a, qu a quote like that and i'm just like oh my goodness major red flag this is such a brush over like cop out you know one of the most powerful companies and they're saying things like they can't think of any useful things that can be done with this data and meanwhile if you look up netflow data on the internet just google it and you will just see countless articles about all the ways that it helps track down people Generally, this is couched as like how it helped track down the bad guy, how we saw through this privacy protection, how we were able to nab the data about the destination of this traffic, even though they were using a VPN, all of this stuff, right? And then on the other side, sometimes you can imagine that it's not being applied to such noble purposes. Perhaps they're trying to track down the location or the real world identity of someone that they just want to track down because they're bad. Like, it, anyway, I'm not going to harp on this point. I just thought this was a shocking thing for this person to say. So let's, uh, let's just keep going. I want to uh, start to wrap things up, but there are some really interesting things in here I wanted to just cover. Um, now, 
Uh, there were sources who were familiar with this data who said they were concerned about the sale of NetFlow data, but that team Kumru also enables security organizations to do some really awesome work. So I'm conflicted about it. Yeah, I know. Like that's, I don't think we should be conflicted about it. I think in principle, this is bad selling dragnet data, like mass surveillance tools of all of our activity, right? Because yes, it's always going to be able to do some really awesome work. That's not the point. No one is contradicting that. No one is saying, oh, I don't think it's awesome work. There's some really great things that can happen with this data. The problem is, is that tool also enables a huge invasion of people's privacy. It is a mass surveillance tool. Um, this data is just being sold. We have no idea what's going on with it. We didn't give consent for it to be handed out. It's just a really bad situation for the average person who's just having their sensitive stuff scooped up on the internet and there's nothing they can do about it. It definitely should provoke some thoughts, if not a little bit of outrage about all of the policies we have around data collection because they're not great right now. Now, apparently Senator Wyden's office asked the Department of Defense which includes various military and intelligence agencies such as National Security Agency and the Defense uh, in Intelligence Agency for detailed information on its data purchasing practices. One thing I will say about Senator Wyden, he always does a good job in pushing back um, and uh, when it comes to privacy and just finding out what the government's actually doing and holding them accountable. If you don't know who Ron Wyden is, I mean, he's the one who was really holding uh, Keith Alexander from the NSA um, uh, in Congress years and years ago before the Snowden revelations, really holding him to answering some important questions about the collection of data. And his sound clips became famous when the Snowden revelations then came out. And it was like, oh, Keith Alexander from the NSA lied to everyone. And, and you know, Ron Wyden knew he was, but he was basically bound and gagged for uh, being part of the in intelligence committee. He wasn't allowed to say it, but he really did press uh, Keith Alexander to try and bring this stuff to light in the best way that he could. So he does a lot of awesome work there. Um, but basically the response showed that the Pentagon is carrying out warrantless surveillance of Americans, according to a subsequent letter written by Wyden and obtained by Vice. So this is a big deal. I, I, this stuff is happening. Um, they couldn't legally publish specifics on the surveillance, um, but this stuff is going on and Wyden's office is, is trying to pursue that. But it's difficult when all these agencies lie about what they're actually doing. Now, um, back to the Snowden revelations that I mentioned, you know, a, a bunch of stuff that the intelligence agencies were found to have been doing was since found to be illegal. So Snowden shed a bunch of light on all these practices that were just commonplace practices and courts have since found this activity to be illegal. So the government is doing a bunch of illegal activity. Some of it has been um, discovered, brought to light. Some of it is in the shadows and it's kind of murky and we should really get to the bottom of it. If they're selling, if they're purchasing all of this data on US citizens and they're doing it without a warrant, there, I mean, there, there has to be some sort of probe into the legality of that and whether or not it's unconstitutional to be going through people's things, which I think the internet activity is, is should be owned by them, um, without a warrant. That, I mean, that's what the Fourth Amendment is, is all about, right? So let's wrap this up. What I wanted to say to all of you is just stay vigilant, right? There are lots of things happening with our data right now. I actually have a couple of videos coming out which are going to kind of make you feel a little bit sick inside, but they give you uh, proactive measures that you can take to start protecting yourselves because at the end of the day, you guys are the only ones looking out for yourselves. Yeah, no one's coming to save you. This is stuff that we have to figure out on our own and fix on our own, right? So we've got a video coming out about tracking links and things that you, you can do to avoid those and what a tremendous amount of data they collect about you. We've got another video about real-time real time bids, basically this data industry and the sale of this data. So we have a whole video diving into the specifics of how these mechanisms work. It's gonna blow your mind. I thought I knew about this stuff and it's so much worse than I could possibly imagine. So on that cheery note, um, what I just wanna leave you with is like, we need to be staying informed about this stuff. It can be scary, it can seem a bit overwhelming, but we need to stay informed because there's so much stuff happening with our data right now that a lot of it can just disappear into the noise. We don't want that to happen. We need to stay informed, we need to monitor it, and we need to be really loud when we discover things happening that we don't like.
it's only through being loud, speaking up about this stuff, pushing back that we can actually start to make a difference, create better laws around this stuff or create awareness so that people can start to learn about tools that they can use themselves to fight it. So um, you just stay vigilant, keep up with this stuff, spread the word about tools that you think are valuable that you're using in your life. I'm sure your friends would be grateful to hear about some things that could help protect their privacy if they start to understand what's going on. I mean, it is always a cat and mouse game companies and governments and everyone they're always after more data but we can take steps to protect our data we can take steps to start to anonymize our digital footprint to start to hide internet activity not because we're doing anything wrong but because we have you know a, a fundamental belief that privacy is valuable and we want to maintain it in our digital lives not just our, our physical lives so lots of tools worth digging into we're trying to sl slowly show you how they work on this channel but if you guys have good videos that you like that sh show interesting tools feel free to sh share them with us if you have things that you want us to cover that you think oh i need to learn how to protect my router or whatever let us know and we'll dig into it we'll try to provide some easy to understand tools that you can just immediately enact in your life and that is the end of the show today. Woo, what a marathon. All right, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe before you head off. Uh, I love you guys being here. I love all of the, um, oh, Cryptonomics says, get the likes up. I agree with that, Cryptonomics. It really does help us. It is a zero cost way that you guys can help support the content of this channel. We do rely on you spreading the word uh, so that we can reach more people with this message, which we think is an important one. Thank you so much for tuning in. Go have a wonderful rest of your week, wonderful rest of your evening, wonderful rest of your morning, wherever you are in the world. And we will be back next Thursday, 4 p.m. as usual with our live show. And we will also be coming to you. Next video comes out on Saturday. That one's about tracking lengths. That, that one's a good one. So keep an eye out for that. But see you, everyone. Bye.